When I get up in the morning, the world just isn't right. And I need my morning cup. And I gather my equipment together and my ingredients and I start the water boiling. And soon I have this wonderful aroma. And that first sip sets the world straight. Now I can begin my day. For the last 20 years, I've been trying to understand and sometimes even live 18th century life. And one of the things I've been missing is coffee. And coffee, it isn't just a drink. It's something that impacts all of society in the 17th and 18th century. It's that important. You can't leave it out. It was so impactful that it created a location that was new to society, and that's the coffee house. You would be able to use it as a workplace. You might buy books at your coffee house. You might hear speeches, and it was a place of a lot of political discourse. So much so that various governments at different times tried to suppress coffee to keep that from happening. It was a very impactful part of your community. 18th century coffee houses aren't completely different than coffee houses today. But what about the coffee itself? Where does it come from? How was it prepared? And how was it roasted? My name is Ryan Kerr, and I just bought a coffee company. Having worked at Townsend's for the past 10 years, naturally taking my modern love for coffee and tracing its roots back to where it began in history is something that's super important to me. Modern coffee roasting is high tech. Oftentimes it's using computer programs, you're measuring curves, lots of tools at your disposal. It's something that I've been apprenticing in for a while and there's still a lot to learn. But what I want to get back to are the roots of roasting coffee. A single person roasting over an open fire for the needs for themselves and their household. I want to experience that. Whether we're talking about then or now, all coffee starts out as a coffee seed. And these come out of cherries from a coffee plant and they're green. In the time period they were roasting dark coffee, there's even a reference of waiting until the coffee to sweat, and that's how you know that it's finished, and that's the oils coming out of the coffee being after it's been roasted. Modern coffee is full of options, especially from where the coffee is coming from. Most consumers, when they walk into a coffee house, they know whether or not they want a coffee from Africa, or if they want a coffee from Central America, or something in between, because they understand those taste profiles. That is not how coffee was in our time period. In the time period, you had very few options. Most coffee was all roasted the same. You were happy to have whatever coffee you got, and as far as you were concerned, it all tasted the same. Today, two of the most popular regions to get coffee from are from South America and Central America. In our time period, you really didn't see much coming from that part of the world. It was happening mostly over in Africa. There's a lot of coffee coming from Arabian nations. You see a little bit coming from Jamaica and Costa Rica. Other than that, it's African based in this Middle Eastern. Coffee roasting technique in the 17th and 18th century is bewilderingly simple. They used very, very crude equipment. Frying pans? or they might use a, a large ladle with little holes drilled in it. Sometimes they had these primitive rotary roasters, a metal round tin can on a long stick that you would turn on a spit in front of your fire. It's just hard to imagine that they could turn out drinkable coffee with such simple equipment. It's funny that Modern roasting equipment is really just a variation on that round tin can on a stick. They have a large drum that's motor driven and it has a precision heat source, but down deep, it's exactly the same method. So I need to be honest with you. I'm not a coffee drinker. I do not drink coffee. I drink tea every day. And that's one of the problems I've got with coffee. As I research it and understand it, that's all fine and good. But to truly understand it in its 18th century context, I need to 
I need to roast it, I need to make it, I need to drink it and enjoy it. This turned out really, really great. You see the some darkness and then there's some there are some lighter beans. This is generally darker than what we would probably roast in trending coffee houses today. The trend has gone towards lighter coffee, but in the time period, they like dark coffee. Preparation for this coffee to drink it is super simple. In the time period, they didn't have a whole lot of options like we do now. And today we can say, oh, I want an AeroPress or I want an espresso or all these different kinds of coffee preps. In the time period, it was boiled water, either over ground coffee or cooked with ground coffee. That's it. You would boil the water, you would take it out, and then you would pour the grounds in and pour the water back over it, sort of like what is happening with a French press nowadays. The strength of coffee when it was brewed in the time period varied a lot. We've seen references from one single ounce of coffee and a quart of water all the way up to three ounces of coffee and a quart of water, which is very strong. I know a lot of folks that like good, strong coffee, but I don't think that in current day I've ever heard of anybody drinking it quite that strong. That's very, very strong coffee. As far as additives to brewed coffee in the time period, you're seeing lots of things. Some folks are using sugar. They weren't at first, and then they move into that. You'll see milk come in a little later. Also, herbs, uh, there's a reference to adding two cloves to a pint of coffee. Today, what I wanna do is just drink this black because I want to taste every bit of that smoke and everything that we roasted over the open fire. From 1700 to 1800, the price of coffee changes immensely in America. At 1700, a pound of green unroasted coffee beans is selling for as much as 20 shillings. By 1750, that same pound is now only costing five shillings. And by 1800, it's down to a single shilling per pound. That is a big change, especially for the common man. What once was totally out of reach economically becomes something that they can afford every day. way better than I thought it would be. At this point, I roast coffee almost every day. And there's something really special about taking something that is green and it's hard like pea gravel and you can't use it for anything. And within minutes, it turns into something like this. And so doing it over the open fire it's just, it, it made everything come together for me. While I don't drink modern coffee, um, this is good. By the time you roast it, you know, you've seen those green beans and you've roasted it and you, you know, you watch that transference from, from one thing to another, and then you grind it in that, that little grinder and it just makes powder. It's just nothing like modern coffee. And it does give me an appreciation for the effect it had in society. I think it is something really special. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying this.